this was April 11th, a uh, super windy day. And I had my husband use my cell phone to tape. Um, the rest of the video will be a little bit better quality. Um, I am. This is my second time working on getting her to give to the bridal instead of just going strung out. Um, so I'm just asking her to give a little bit. And when she brings her head down and gives to the bridal, I give her a release. Um, so just just showing you where she is after her only five hours under saddle total. But there's been, as I said, 45 hours of groundwork working on a myriad of things uh, to get her to behave and be responsive because she's a difficult child but she is just doing incredibly awesome loves to work um, at first I said not a good work ethic she just um, needs to be challenged kind of like a cattle dog <laughs> super smart girl she gets bored quickly one rain stop here. So this was uh, a few weeks prior, some of the groundwork, and then go back to under saddle. Uh, so I've spent a lot of time with her um, on the ground because she had a lot of bad history to underdo, undo. She's almost six years old. Uh, and she was just started under saddle here. Here going over the bridge, um, the first day I attempted that, it took me 20 minutes and I ended with having her stand by it. And the second time, five minutes, and she put her foot over it and she went over it. Uh, to practice for versatility, not that she's gonna do that, but she could. Um, I don't ever force them at the obstacle, so I'm not going to raise the stick or twirl the rope at her bum. I back her off of it and start again. So right before she gets to a certain point before it, I don't put any more pressure. I actually learned that when I went to a clinic when... Pirelli came to Mass the first time, and I've used it ever since. I'm not a Pirelli person, but I use stuff that I've seen him do that works and helps me teach clients. And the method that he, I've seen him use to get horses to go over obstacles uh, works incredibly good, and that's how I've trained my horse is going forward once I saw him put a horse over a tarp that way. And it took quite a while. But once you master it, then you have a safe horse, a horse that is willing and knows that you're never gonna scare him when he's scared at that particular water crossing, bridge, whatever he encounters. So I'm just moving her back and forth through these ground poles. I'm going to ride her over them after. And it's the first time I've worked with the four ground poles together. So here, um, stand to be mounted. Um, I've worked on that a lot. I have the camera set up here on a barrel. This is the first time that she's walked off since the beginning, but I was able to check her quick because um, she's really solid at standing there. I like to wait a minute and just give them a good rubbing and um, so they never want to walk off. 30 seconds to a minute. So here you can see she's green in the bridle um, 
still pushing out against the pressure a little bit, but doing also well. Uh, I started her, uh, tried to start her in Dr. Cook's Pitless Bridal. Um, she wanted to eat it the, where the reins come out. She wanted to grab it and have it in her mouth. Um, so I went back to a rope halter for three rides. When I say rides, these were all lasting 10 to 15 minutes. And after that, I was able to go put her back in the Dr. Cook's. At the end of this video, you'll see I put a short clip of what she looked like when I first started driving her in it. Uh, same thing as she looked uh, in the rope halter, because the horse is not born giving to pressure. And she had five years pushing through pressure um, when, well, not that long, but she is five and a half. Uh, she wasn't led a lot in her first few years of life. She was just in a pen and didn't do much. But she was at a rescue for a year before she came here where she pushed through pressure uh, of a chain over her nose for a solid year. So they weren't severe with it, but when you walk with it and pull back for halt, it teaches the horse to push through pressure um, instead of get soft, get soft in their face. So now here um, we're gonna do Liberty. So I don't have anything connected to her and she's just coming with me. Uh, we've done join up to where she hangs out with me. I can send her off and call her back. Um, and so all this groundwork gets the horse in tune, uh, following the feel, paying attention to energy, taking your energy up and bringing your energy down. I do a lot of exhaling, um, a lot of rewards. There's corrections with corrections, but there's reward of release of pressure and taking my energy down. Uh, this horse is very mouthy, and I'm asking her to disengage her hindquarters here. Uh, first time I did it, she brought her hip over to me and slammed me. I had a line on her face, pulled her head to drive her hindquarters, and she just uh, body slammed me. So she's doing really good. Here I just sent her over to the fence, walked over the fence, and got on her. And again, this is probably a week or two before, probably the beginning of April. Um, just going back a little bit on footage that I hadn't loaded. Um, the first few weeks she was here, I didn't even ride her. That was uh, January because I had to establish some manners, a lot of manners. She did some rearing on the lead rope when asked to back up. She did quite a bit of rearing. Um, she hasn't done any rearing under saddle whatsoever. Just working on a little bit of a leg yield. Um, but the rides have just been very short. That's how I like to do it. Especially with this horse because she was at a huge deficit with her ground work. So Every session I've pulled her out, whether it was one hour or two hours, most of the session was all groundwork. And then the last few minutes riding. It was only in the last um, six weeks, I guess, that I started riding her maybe 15 or 20 minutes instead of five or 10. The other factor is after the first two months of her being here, 
we went from four or five hours a week, mostly four because of the weather, down to only uh, three hours a week. So that's not a lot of time, um, actual time if you think about it. But since the horse was here for several months, we want to make it easier financially on her. Um, if you do nothing, you do nothing wrong. So, but if a horse is being led in and out to a paddock or a corral every day, there's a chance to do something wrong twice a day. If he's in a pen and not having anything done to him, you're doing nothing wrong. You're not advancing, but you're not going to go backwards. And you can go backwards big time <clears throat> with several people handling a horse or one person handling a horse and not handling it correctly. Meaning, allowing it to be fresh, barge through gates, barge through stall um, openings, nip, um, be fresh. So, this horse was very fresh uh, because she wasn't taught manners and She's uh, doing very good. She still has a propensity to be mouthy. Um, uh, she has never bit me, uh, but she did lunge at my face with her teeth. Uh, and that was only less than a month ago when my husband fired up the backhoe and she was going into her bad place where she gets a little neurotic when she hears equipment, four-wheeler or heavy equipment, and she was pacing. Um, and I tried to let her know it was all right, and she snapped at me, just missed me. So um, here um, I'm asking her to turn on the forehand and you can see it's not all roses and I don't omit bad footage um, to make myself look better or the horse look better um, since I know she knows the cue from the ground and I've done it from under saddle before not a lot I'm asking waiting she's like get off my side and I tell her here by using the saddle strings, get off of that pressure. Give to pressure. Don't stand there and do nothing. So, she's getting unsettled, wanting to back up. I pushed her back up. Have her wait a second. I'm asking her to disengage her hindquarters. And she does it there. Settling her a little bit. And then ask her again. Good girl. She's like, why are you touching my sides? I'm just having her walk off. She doesn't want to walk off. But the mare is super smart for the very yeah, limited actual out. hours we've I had. I throw my camera if I need to grab because I'm holding the reins in one hand, but I've only been out one time, not this far. Back up, and ooh. Good. Walk up. Good girl. I'm going to put the camera away so I can focus on my ride. And here is just to show you how she didn't give to the bridle. Um, when I first started her, some people could say, oh, that doesn't work. Um, she was like that under saddle at first, uh, with the pressure. It just takes patience and training, and, um, the horses advance. Once they get it, they get it where the release is. You can work these horses on the ground and the bridle at a standstill. Um, 
She's wanting to turn and face me. Typical of a horse learning to drive, um, to ground drive. So this is the stuff you run into. Doesn't mean you quit. Um, and she's just um, so very proud of how far she's come. And um, she's an amazing, smart horse. So this is probably going to be... I'll probably do one more video on her. Isn't she cute? Um, and that'll be it.